Hey, good evening, Southeast Texas. I hope you're doing well in this very trying time. Let's take a look at what's going on. And obviously, we've got uh, Marco heading into the northern Gulf of Mexico and then Laura off the southeast tip of Cuba. So there's many variables that have made this forecast exceedingly difficult. We've got shear. We've got a high building in from the southwest Atlantic. These storms could still interact. Will the troughs stay or depart Texas? And then there's still the potential these could interact. So uh, this has made it a historically difficult forecast. Never seen anything like this. Continue to watch Marco being sheared. You can see how the clouds are quickly moving off towards the north. It's tilted. In other words, the center may be here, but the top of the storm, the hurricane, is off towards the north. So when you have it tilted, it doesn't really stack up. You want it to stack straight up and down for it to intensify. In fact, this is going to help uh, weaken the storm as it nears the Louisiana coastline. Hurricane warning still in effect, but as you can see, paralleling the coastline, it does weaken, as you can see, significantly, but still forecast to come over the triangle. Now, this could shift north and south. Uh, this is not set in stone. For now, we'll go with the wind gusts here locally in the triangle, 25, maybe 30 miles an hour, could be more. But I think with thunderstorms, we've seen worse. So something to watch uh, as we head on into Tuesday. Rainfall uh, does not look that terrible right now. We need rain, and we're going to get it, I think, out of Marco. Then the real tiger that we're going to have to tame, if you will, is uh, tropical storm Laura. Laura is going to interact with Cuba, obviously, and that's going to hold it within hurricane, less than hurricane status. So again, just many variables. How is this going to interact with the islands? That's another variable, but we're going to take that out as it enters the Gulf of Mexico. Hopefully the upper level pattern will be more clear as we head on into tomorrow and we can kind of hone in on exactly where this is going to go. So Marco, or I should say Laura, going right. Boy, it's, it's difficult to keep track of all these. Uh, Laura is expected to merge into the Gulf of Mexico as we head on into Tuesday morning early. So we're going to take that variable out. So then it's all about will these storms kind of interact with each other or is it also the upper level pattern, the high off towards the east and over Florida and then the trough over Texas. Is that going to stick around or is it going to weaken? A stronger Laura would go more west. A weaker Laura would turn more north. So let's take a look at this. And as we head on into early Wednesday morning, I believe it's about 200 miles to the south of uh, Lafouche or Terrebonne Parish. It becomes a Cat 1 hurricane. And about 130 miles to the south-southeast of Cameron, it becomes a Cat 2 with winds of 105 miles an hour. That would be a strong Cat 2 as it then makes landfall uh, over towards Holly Beach. Maybe Cameron as a Cat 2, and it looks like Wednesday late, maybe in the evening hours. But again, all of southeast Texas is within the cone of uncertainty. So is southwest Louisiana. And again, as we've seen time and time and time again, these cones can shift very easily. So we're hoping for a shift. We need a break, don't we? So again, after it makes landfall, then we'll turn more north and northwest, going over the lakes area overnight Wednesday. And got some additional information as far as storm surge and uh, watches and warnings. Hurricane watch in effect for Vermilion Parish on over towards the Atchafalaya River and tropical storm warnings in effect for the eastern half of Cameron Parish. Uh, let's see, Jeff Davis back over towards uh, Acadia, all of Lafayette and also in towards Vermilion Parish into southwest Louisiana. A storm surge watch is in effect. And uh, that's for Cameron Parish back over towards Vermilion Parish. So a Cat 2 storm has winds of 96 to 110 miles an hour. There's still the potential this could become a major hurricane. It's not that far. We're forecasting 105. And uh, just above that is a Cat 3. Rita came in as a 120 mile per hour Cat 3 hurricane. At one time it was a Cat 5, you might remember, in 2005. It made landfall in Johnson Bayou on the 24th, early on the 24th of September in 2005, and then moved across southeast Texas. It produced wind gusts of 64 miles an hour, sustained at uh, Beaumont, and wind gusts of 105. So we're hoping that uh, this does not do that, but just to put things in perspective. Otherwise, here's a rough timeline as far as Marco should be over southeast Texas uh, coming up uh, Tuesday afternoon and evening, really Tuesday. Tropical storm force winds could arrive Tuesday morning in southeast Texas. 
That'll be on the low end, okay? It's more so Laura. Wednesday evening, Wednesday night, Laura will be over southeast Texas, southwest Louisiana. Tropical storm force winds could arrive as early as Wednesday uh, evening uh, across uh, southeast Texas. And as we take a look at the tropical storm probability winds, need 39 mile per hour winds or greater, that's a tropical storm. Otherwise, we're looking at about 20 to maybe 25% chance of that happening. Again, this is going to be dissipating or weakening as it crosses uh, southeast Texas. Then we've got uh, the second round, and that is with uh, Laura. And this is uh, by Thursday morning early. You can see a good 60 to 70% probability that we'll see at least 39 mile per hour winds, unless this cone changes, and it certainly could. We've seen that time and time again. We're hopeful that that does happen. Otherwise, hurricane force winds associated with Laura, right now we're only at a 20% probability. But again, that could change this far out where it's only a 20% probability. As far as storm surge, it all depends on where the center goes. If it's off over towards maybe Holly Beach or Cameron, the onshore flow would be over towards the eastern end of Cameron Parish, back over towards Vermilion Parish, and on off towards the Atchafalaya River Basin. We would have north winds over the Triangle. So that's an offshore flow. That moves the water away from shore. So it's all dependent upon the dirty side or the clean side. So we don't want to get on the southeast side of that. Right now, uh, there is an excessive rainfall outlook between 7 a.m. Uh, Tuesday and 7 a.m. Wednesday, and that is a marginal risk. We've been pretty dry in southeast Texas. We could use rain. Hopefully we don't get what we're seeing right now from the uh, hydrological, uh, hydrometeorological prediction center. Uh, this is showing as much as seven inches over southwest Louisiana, southeast Texas. That's up into Beauregard Parish, uh, back into Cameron Parish, and also Calcasieu Parish, and most of southeast Texas from Jefferson back up into, uh, let's see, the lakes area of southeast Texas. Again, it just depends on the track. If this goes left or right, this is certainly going to change. But this is what we're seeing right now. So with our forecast, Tuesday I've got wind gusts of 25. I may need to raise that to maybe 30, okay? But right now I think we could handle that. We've seen worse thunderstorms produce that. We need the rain. And then late Wednesday, Wednesday night into Thursday, that's when we'll see the window of opportunity, if you will, for the potential for hurricane conditions. I am not putting winds on right now. Sorry, too far out. This could so ch easily change, and I don't want, I don't want, I don't want, to, I don't want to change that anymore. So we'll just go with uh, northeast and north winds, obviously near hurricane or at hurricane force, and then turning southwest with the storm heads off towards the north. So we'll probably have winds on this tomorrow, but right now it's just, it's just too early for me to comfortly go with uh, any type of forecast, and then. Obviously, with uh, the storm moving on out, we're left with a tropical air mass across southeast Texas as we head on into the uh, latter part of this week. Otherwise, that's where we're at right now. We'll take your questions, please and thank you. No questions? Okay, we'll do it one more time. Here's where we stand. We've got Marco, south-southeast of the mouth of the Mississippi River, and then we've got uh, Laura, south, uh, really on the coast of uh, southeast Florida. Marco is being sheared quite significantly, and that shear from the south is obviously going to weaken it. As you can see, it goes from a Cat 1 and then weakens to a tropical storm. The cone takes it right across mainly uh, southeast Texas, southwest Louisiana, as a weak tropical storm. Again, I've said this before. We've seen thunderstorms worse than what I think is going to occur with Marco. Then we've got uh, Laura has great potential. We'll see if she uh, is able to capitalize on that. One of the variables is the interaction with uh, Cuba, the landmass. We're going to take that away coming up as we work on into Tuesday morning. It will emerge into the Gulf of Mexico. Then we'll be looking at where the trough is, where the high is. Will these interact with each other? So with one of those variables, that ought to help hone down where that uh, exact track is going to go. So as we continue with this timeline, it looks like Wednesday morning, we ought to have a Cat 1 hurricane. It will further strengthen into a Cat 2 with winds of 105 miles an hour Wednesday afternoon and then make landfall Wednesday evening around Holly Beach back over towards uh, Cameron and Cameron Parish, Louisiana, and then move up towards the lakes area. A uh, very similar pattern, at least forecast, uh, to Rita, although it's not as strong as Rita, okay? 
at this forecast. That could certainly change, and there's the potential this could become a major hurricane. As far as warnings and watches, we've got a hurricane watch over for Vermilion Parish and a tropical storm warning in effect for Eastern Cameron Parish back over towards uh, Acadiana at the present time and a tropical storm watch, or I should say a storm storage watch for Cameron and Vermilion Parish. Nothing in Southeast Texas as far as any watches or warnings at this point. Uh, forecast calls for a Cat 2 hurricane that has winds of uh, 96 to 110 miles an hour. It's not far from a Cat 3, as you can see, that would be 111 miles an hour, and there's still some potential over that. Now, again, we're hoping the track changes, but this is the timeline. It looks like uh, Marco will be over southeast Texas coming up uh, Tuesday, and those tropical storm winds could, of uh, 39 miles an hour or greater, could arrive uh, Tuesday morning. And then uh, Wednesday night, uh, we're looking at uh, Laura moving over southeast Texas, really over southwest Louisiana and portions of southeast Texas. Otherwise, as far as the tropical storm possibilities are related to Marco, there's a 20% probability we'll see winds of 39 miles an hour or greater over southeast Texas regarding tropical storm Marco. Obviously, higher probabilities with a hurricane. With Laura, right at this point, this far out, it's a 60 to 70% probability of seeing winds of at least 39 miles an hour as that storm moves through southeast Texas. As far as hurricane probabilities, that's uh, winds of 74 miles an hour or greater. We're at a 20% chance right now in southeast Texas. It all depends on where the eye is, where the center of the circulation moves on shore. Right now, it'd be around Holly Beach or back over to Cameron. So this is the dirty side of the storm. The circulation brings south winds that piles water up. That's where the greatest storm surge is going to be at this forecast. Then those winds come around and you get an offshore wind uh, over toward southeast Texas. So we would see below normal tides along the coastline. So if that shifts left or right, of course, that will impact the storm surge forecast. Also, as far as excessive rainfall at this point, it looks like between 7 a.m. Tuesday and 7 a.m. Wednesday, there's a marginal risk obviously a slight risk further off to the east where the heavier rainfall should fall, but still uh, we need it here in southeast Texas, but we don't need seven inches in the span of about two days uh, that could fall uh, across southeast Texas and southwest Louisiana. Again, this is following the track. If this track goes further to the east, obviously the rainfall will be further to the east. If it goes further to the west, obviously that will take the rainfall with it. It all depends on the exact track of these storms, which is still fluid and change is still possible. At this point, Tuesday, uh, it looks like we'll see Marco over southeast Texas during the evening hours. Uh, right now, we've got wind gusts of 25, maybe 30 miles an hour. Obviously, we've seen worse with thunderstorms. And then Wednesday late into overnight into the wee hours Thursday is when Laura would move through southwest Louisiana and then head towards the lakes area. Not going to put winds on there right now because obviously hurricane conditions are possible, but I think their changes are still, there's too many flip-flops. Just not going to do that right now. Otherwise, by the end of the week and on into the weekend, we'll have a very tropical air mass over southeast Texas, and uh, we will continue to see scattered showers and thunderstorms. It's very latest. Any questions? One person is wondering, could Laura rapidly intensify? Absolutely. Yes, it could. Yes. Uh, hopefully it doesn't, but uh, it certainly could be a Cat 3. Hopefully not a Cat 4. Okay. Hey, lots could change. We'll continue to keep you up, uh, updated as best as we can and uh, bring you the very latest information. And uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. There's more weather at 12newsnow.com. Stay safe and have a good evening.